Hey, Facebook land, going live today, GG Inspire. Uh, it's an exciting day. It's going to be fun. Uh, I'm going to cover a topic that I think a lot of you guys think you're, I think I'm going to cover a topic that I think a lot of you guys would be interested in hearing about. Uh, today's topic is an introvert turned extrovert, and that's me, actually, and I think there's a lot of you out there that are like that, too. Um, this week's been a little tough for us. We've been dealing with some personal stuff. Um, my, um, my mom's longtime uh, significant other, um, is, I, I think I told you guys probably months ago, um, he was diagnosed uh, with cancer and was, has been very ill, and, you know, has been having treatment, and been getting better, having good days and bad days, um, but you know it's it's pretty much um, towards the end now. So it's been it's been really rough, and uh, we did a little extra makeup today, so that's good. <laughs> uh, but it's it's been challenge, and I know that you know there's so many out there, the people that are dealing with these types of things, and I'm going to invite some other people in. But today is actually going to be a good topic, so I'm not trying to to bum any of you guys out, but uh, what's cool is that, you know, when you have the ability to go live, you know, there's there's no um, there's no parachute, there's no nothing. So you just have to go, and uh, today will be a good one. Uh, I think there's a lot of people, I mean, I'm sure everybody could probably, you know, get an idea or at least kind of guess whether or not they're an introvert or an extrovert, but, you know, surprisingly enough, I was talking about this topic my dad brought it up to me. He said, you know, this would be a good topic for you to cover because a lot of people are introverted um, and uh, they don't know how to be more extroverted or they're shy or what have you. And so um, I always say that I'm an introvert turned extrovert, uh, but nobody believes me because you guys see me on GG Inspire and you see me going out and talking to people and talking to people and like getting all like fired up and, you know, you know all the energy that I'm showing. Hey, Antonio. Hey, Tony. Hey, hey Pawnee. How are you? Um, so you know, I go out there and I, I give a lot of energy, but I'm actually naturally an introvert. And so I think a lot of people, you know, they don't necessarily, um, they don't necessarily understand the difference between an introvert and an extrovert and even what, sh what being shy is and whether or not that's somebody who's an introvert as well. So I just wanted to get into it. Um, please, if you have any questions, like tell me, actually, if you could comment, first of all, tell me like what city you're in because uh, we have people jumping on from all over the country. We've got contacts all over the place. I'm getting a ton of feedback as far as uh, GG Inspire, Go Live, and like some of the things that people have been saying. So uh, it's exciting to see, but I also want you guys to get an opportunity. Oh, I don't want to forget about Instagram. Hi, Serena. Hey, uh, hey Eric. Um, so yeah, so I don't want to forget, but I want you guys to share with us, like, what is it that you, um, are you an introvert or you're an extrovert? What do you think, right? Because if anybody on here that either on Facebook or Instagram went to high school with me, then they would probably guess that I was an introvert because I was super shy. I never talked to anybody. I used to like look down at the floor whenever I would walk anywhere. I didn't speak up in class. I didn't do a lot of these things. Hey, Zasha. Hey, Danny. Hey, Yardetta. Thanks for joining. Um, so I used to do a lot of those things. And so, you know, I did a quiz because I, we got into this whole topic. So my dad suggested it and he was like, you should do a topic about introvert turned extrovert. And so I went to my, my husband and I said, hey, so I think I'm an introvert, um, and he was like, you're out of your freaking mind. You're a total extrovert. You talk all the time, which he didn't say it in like a positive way, so that was kind of a dig. But anyway, so he's like, you talk all the time. You're super animated with the way that you talk and, and all of that. And so he's like, there's absolutely no way that you're an introvert. And, I, and he said, I'm an introvert. I don't like to talk to people. I like to be at the side. Like, I don't even enjoy talking in front of crowds. Now, I didn't always enjoy talking in front of crowds, and I was actually pretty awful at it when I started. But... I was like, you know what, I want to do some digging into this because if you've ever taken a, a Myers-Briggs test, and I'm some of you guys have probably taken that test before, uh, when I took that test like years ago, I think it was like like right before college or maybe like during undergrad, um, they said that I was an introvert. And so Myers-Briggs calls an introvert, it's not that it's somebody, it's not about being shy, it's about where you draw your energy from. So I think that's a really interesting point because you don't necessarily know that even if somebody is is out there and they're able to talk freely, that doesn't mean that they draw their energy from that, right? So um, here's a perfect example. I talk a lot about uh, Ed Milet. Uh, please visit him. Follow him at, at Ed Milet um, or edmilet.com. He does incredible podcasts. He's going out there and doing amazing things in the industry, interviewing people from all walks of life, all different types of successful people in business, in sports, what have you. And he um, goes on stage and he's an incredible speaker, totally magnetic high energy, absolutely incredible, but when you meet him and you talk to him one-on-one, -on -one, he is an introvert. 
So doesn't like to necessarily, you know, be the center of attention, even though he enjoys speaking and he's very good at it. But he's naturally an introvert when you talk with him one on one. So, you know, I was like, okay, so there's hope for me yet, right? So the way that I've always looked at it is that an introvert is a shy person. And I think a lot of people would say that. And I hope that, that we're, uh, we're working because I, I see a lot of people joining on. But okay, good. So we're good. Um, so, okay, so I did this personality test, right? And it was asking me a bunch of questions. And so if you guys feel comfortable, like, you know, put out here what you think. Hey, Hassan, thanks for joining. So um, put out here what you think, like it, how you, what your answer would be, right? So like um, how many friends can you rely on? Like is it just a few or is it do you have like a huge circle of friends or is it more than four or is it like just one person that you're super, super close to, right? Um, how are you at parties? Are you the life of the party? Are you somebody that is kind of off to the side? Like can't, you know, just kind of, you know, in, in the party, but not really part of it. Um, are you somebody who posts a lot of pictures of yourself on social media? Not necessarily, um, pictures of like, uh, you know, scenes or your family or what have you, but pictures of yourself. That's the important part, right? So I was saying like, I post, I don't post a picture of myself every day. Jason was like, are you kidding? I said, like, no, I post pretty often. I post a picture of myself but not every day. Um, and like, how are you in new surroundings? Are you shy? Do you take a little bit of time to adjust? Like, does it, like, how, how do you feel? Are you uncomfortable? Do you like just adapt? Are you totally good with it? What situations um, make you most comfortable? Are you better like with just one person? Are you better by yourself? Um, are you better in a, in a capacity where you're just um, like with lots of people around? Like how, how do you feel most comfortable? What makes you feel best, right? And then how do you like recharge your energy? How do you get to the point where you feel better, right? Sorry, okay. So I went through this whole quiz and basically I was a truthful, it's funny because I went through it once and I, and I answered the questions and I said I was an introvert. And then I went through it again with Jason so I could like make sure and verify that he was agreeing with the answers that I was giving and it still said you are an introvert. So I was like, okay. And he still thinks that that's a load. But anyway, doesn't matter. So the introvert's brain processes information differently than an extrovert does. And that's okay, there's nothing wrong with it, right? It's just how we process information and how we deal with stuff. So this is what I think. I think that if you can get to the point where you know your temperament, you know you're an introvert, you know that you're better in a smaller group or what have you versus an extrovert who's, who's great in front of good crowds or they draw their energy from that, um, then you can change your life because I have heard, I could not even count the number of times. Hey, Ebony, I cannot even count the number of times people told me, oh, I'm an introvert. You're super like, you know, extroverted and you're like good with people. And so that's why you're good in business. Like that's good for you. No, not necessarily. I just am passionate about certain things and I'm able to convey that message. But introvert versus extrovert, I'm an introvert. I actually like my time alone. I like my time even at home with my kids or I like my time. It actually asked the question of like, being under, being like, do you enjoy, um, how do you rest, recharge? Do you go home and be like with, you know, two or three people? Uh, do you go and like, are, are you good with like, just kind of like by yourself? Do you want to read a book? Do you want to lay under a warm blanket? And literally while I was reading that question, I was on the couch laying there under a warm blanket. And I was like, well, yeah, that probably makes me feel most comfortable. So pretty clear. Anyway, so I think that if you know your temperament, that you can do amazing things because you know yourself better and you know what you're good at and maybe know what you're not good at or maybe some other things that you want to learn. Okay, so so here's the thing. Recognize introverted traits. Okay, so good. So I got a comment from, from Ebony. So I see you there. Okay, so I hope so. It means that like nobody else is commenting yet. But you guys can let me know if you, if you feel like you're introverted or you feel like you are shy or any of that kind of stuff. Does anybody know the difference between what shy is and what introverted is? I'd love to hear the answer to that if you guys know it. Um, because, uh, who's C Money? I don't know who that is on Instagram. Hey, C Money, thanks for joining us. Okay, so I'll answer it if you guys wanna know. Shy is, is a different kind of thing, right? So people say, like when you're young, think about it this way, when you were young and your parents, like you were going to a party or something like that and you're maybe, quote unquote, shy when you first get to the party and then you warm up and you start to get more comfortable with the people that are there and then you're running around and you're having lots of fun. People say that to their kids all the time. Oh, he's shy, he's shy, he's shy. And that kind of like labels kids sometimes. Like I try not to do that. And I think I've mentioned that before. But here's the deal. It's it's not a shy thing. Shy Shyness is basically like a form of like fear or anxiety over so, social interaction. So if you ever think about an introvert, this is something I was telling uh, Serena earlier today. I said, look, 
I said, as an introvert, I'm somebody that I would think through everything that I was supposed to do. Introverts spend a lot of time, the chatter, the, the, um, the noise, it's in, their, it's in their head. They're thinking through whatever they wanna do or what they wanna say. And that's like, they may be standing there like looking at you like this, but their mind is going a million miles a minute. That's what happens to me, right? So I'm thinking, I used to go out and I go, oh, I have to prospect, or I have to meet somebody new. And I would literally be thinking through the entire conversation of what I wanted to say to this person. Okay, so I should say this, and then maybe they'll say this. And what if they say this, and what if they say this? And I literally would almost say nothing to them, and then by the time it was time for me to go prospect and go actually have a conversation with that person, they were gone. So, you know, introverts sometimes overthink things, and that, for me, that, that may be a level of shyness also. Uh, and as you're more comfortable and you're more confident in, in your ability and what you're able to say, um, that, <laughs> Sarah, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm working on it. Um, the HBR method is in full effect, and I'm like constantly doing that. So um, anyway, I appreciate you. Thanks for getting on, Sarah. That's like an honor to me. Um, so, so talking about being able to, to get out of your comfort zone and like do those things, right? So you have to understand where you're at. So if you feel like I'm an introvert, and some of you kind of feel like you might be, they call it like an ambivert, which is both. Like sometimes I'm introverted, and sometimes I'm extroverted, and that's totally fine. Um, yeah, Hassan, you're a total extrovert for sure, <laughs> and you've been that way. You've been that way forever. But I'm sure you have introverted tendencies. You have times where you're like, I would, you know, appreciate being more like in a in a slower environment or more quiet or less people. That's totally normal, right? So, what you want to do, like, so recognize what an introvert trait is, right? So an introvert trait. So yeah, Serena says she's both. That's awesome. Good. So in introverted traits, they um, they seek out solitude. So they like the opportunity to be able to kind of be by themselves. They prefer less stimulation, so less people around them. Maybe they're like, I just need to be in a little bit quieter space. Maybe it's a little darker room, what have you. I have a couple people that are like, prefer to like be in the office and make their calls in the dark. Totally fine, right? Um, they enjoy small groups. They want to be in a smaller group environment, which is good. They feel more comfortable that way. Um, they enjoy routine and making plans. Yeah, I'm like the listy crazy person, right? So enjoy routines and making plans that's pretty normal right they tend to be quieter maybe maybe not right because um, people anybody who knows me well knows that I'm, I'm not quiet at this point but they're good with people right they may be good with people but they prefer a smaller group in a crowd of new right a crowd of new people so if that's you then maybe you are you have some introverted tendencies that's okay not a bad thing right it's not that an introvert is bad and an extrovert is good 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 great right but you have to know um, what those tendencies are. So here, so here's the extroverted traits, right? So um, like to be around others. They're happiest when they're around others. They're happiest when they're in larger groups, right? They may enjoy attention. They may enjoy attention. They are not necessarily like vain that they have to have attention, right? Um, they're comfortable working in groups. That's normal for them. That, that's, an, that's an easy transition for them. They enjoy adventures. They enjoy adventures, risks, novelty, new experiences. They like to go out and see things. Like those are people that are like, I wanna travel and I wanna meet lots of people and I wanna have lots of experiences and you know, build lots of relationships. Hey Bernie, thanks for joining us. So here's the deal, like those are extroverted tendencies and that's okay, that's a good thing. You need to have all different types of people in this world for the, the world to thrive. But the elements of extroversion or introversion are biological, okay? So the extrovert side is biological. And so I, I would love to hear from a, a couple of you guys if you have questions about what does it mean, you know, what's been your experience with introvert versus extrovert, or even some of the experiences that you've had um, with others who say like, oh, I'm, a, I'm this way, or I'm both, right? Like Serena said, Any, anything like that I think would really, would be good. So there's two parts in the brain that control like the extrovert tendencies, okay? Sorry, I'm moving it. Okay, so there's two parts in the brains that in, it control the extrovert tendencies. So there's the amygdala, and that's what processes emotions, right? I'm going back to like my biology days, which is kind of crazy, but, um, but then the other, so one that processes the emotions, that's the amygdala. The other, and I hope that I pronounce this correctly, it's the nucleus acumens, acumens, okay? And it's like, quote unquote, the reward center, right? So the reward center is that, that's, that's um, response to stimulus with dopamine, right? So if you guys have ever had a good experience, like that's dopamine, right? So when you, like if you're a list maker like me and you cross something off the list, you're like, ah, that was awesome, that's dopamine. It's like a hit of dopamine, right? And so it's a, it's a neurotransmitter in your body that basically like gives you a little like pump, like a little rush. And so 
um, that's what like the adventurists, right? The people that love like thrill seekers, they love, um, what are those called? Like roller coasters and adventures going out, doing new things, all that kind of stuff. Like thrill seekers, like skydiving, like that's a, that's a dopamine, like huge, like explosion, right? So the idea is that that dopamine, you can control that, right? So um, the, they, but basically what they've done is they linked dopamine function to extroversion, right? So if they enjoy that experience, if something good happens and they get that, that hit of dopamine, if the adventure pays off, the reward is good. But on the other side of it, think about it this way. Hey, Terry, um, think about it this way. If the reward doesn't happen or, or if you're, let's say you're somebody who's maybe um, an ambivert, right? You're like, sometimes you could be out there and sometimes might not. And you go out and do something extroverted and the reward, and there is no reward. Like, let's say you get up in your, like when you were a kid, you got up in front of the class. The teacher said, oh, can you come up in front of the class and read something? And you were like, okay, I can do it. I can do it. You felt good about it. And then you mess something up and everybody laughed. Like, then you're like, oh, there's no dopamine in that. That was not a reward. And so you could kind of get, that could make you more introverted. So these are the things that you have. You might have your tendencies, but your experiences in your environment change the way that you are, right? And it changes the way that you re respond to things and, and then necessarily the way that you continue to proceed and act from there, right? So that's helpful to know, I think. Because uh, I was reading this thinking like, oh, okay, this is pretty interesting. So you can train yourself. You can train yourself to be an extrovert, okay? So as many of you guys are like, oh, I'm, she's pretty extroverted, she's pretty animated, what have you, naturally I'm an introvert. So what you do, what you can do, and I'll give you guys some tips, um, is you can almost push yourself a little bit outside of your comfort zone and get the reward, get the reward for doing something different. So, so how many of you guys like have a hard time talking to strangers or, you know, are like, Oh, I, I'm, I'm not comfortable with anybody, but my, like my immediate family. Okay. I'm getting some likes, right. Um, or I, um, like getting up in front of somebody and having a conversation, you know, um, speaking at like public speaking terrifies you. They say that like public speaking as a fear is like, you know, almost worse than death, right? So does anybody have that fear? I, I used to have that fear. I used to like, I remember in speech class, I was kind of freaked out about trying to get up in front of people. But, and then when I got into business later on, I got to the point where I was like, I wanted to get up in front of people and I felt like I needed to, but I was still terrible at it. And one of the things that I appreciate about, about my business is that people are always encouraging you. Even when you suck and you're totally awful, they're still like trying to find like the best thing ever. Like you were awesome because you didn't get on stage and fall. So that was good. <laughs> right. And even if you um, weren't as good as you could be, that you're on the journey to get better. At least you made the effort. And so that's something that I think is a really a cool thing. Um, oh, Ebony, your knee shake when you get up. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I think I've experienced that in my time when you're like super, super nervous and you need to shake, you know, honestly, like, Getting out of that comfort zone, eventually you get to the point where that will go away, right? Um, I used to sweat a lot when I would um, when I would speak, right? And so eventually, you know, it went away. You got more comfortable. You got more comfortable with the material. Um, you could get more comfortable with, with what you're saying, even the environment. Even if you have, like, a few people in that environment that you know well and you're focusing your energy on them, eventually you start to get better. But you have to... Just like I'm talking about, like biologically, you have to smart, start with the small victories and you have to practice getting that little reward and stepping out of your comfort zone and getting that little hit of dopamine for the little reward, the little reward, the little reward, and it'll get better and it'll get easier. So Hassan, it was so great to see you. I hope I can see you again soon. So, so number one, get out of your comfort zone, right? Stop staying and feeling like, oh, that makes me uncomfortable. I don't want to do something like that. Or I think that would be hard for me. Like, stop spending your time giving yourself limits. Like, your comfort zone freaking sucks, you know? Like, nothing good. You don't progress. You're not going to get better staying in your comfort zone. So, you know, for me, like, <clears throat> Ebony is the person that, you know, pushed me into to doing go live, you know, months and months and months and months and months ago. And I was, like, terrified to do it. Like, that's not something that I want to do. It's not something that I, you know, that's not normal for me. Getting up in front of people and speaking, like, you know, I could speak in front of hundreds of people now or even more, but like getting in, you know, like for the whole world to see, that's kind of crazy. So it took me time to adjust. And, you know, when I look back at my videos, I was like super, super nervous. And I still get a little bit nervous, but at the end of the day, like I've gotten some good response and good feedback. So it's made me continue. 
And I feel like it brings out it brings value to people. And I would ask you guys if you know people that are introverted and you feel like, you know what, this would be something that could really help them, send it to them. Share them the information. Send this video, share it on your page, you know, get an opportunity to be able to get somebody else's message to somebody that you think it might benefit, right? Because you never know. There are people out there struggling saying, "Oh, I wish I could do something different." But that's Have you ever heard anybody say this? Like, "Well, that I I'm that's just the way that I am." Yeah, well, that's BS, right? If you want a different life and you want something different, then go out and change it. There's a, there's a million self-help books. There's all these videos. There's all this stuff all over the internet. Even last night, I just Googled introvert versus extrovert. Like, there's tons of information about it. So if you wanted to actively change your life and do something different, people are giving you the tools left and right. But if you choose not to take them, that's on you, right? So we live in a world where we have so much information, so many things available to us. And if we're not taking advantage of it, then we're the ones that are basically dooming ourselves to whatever fate we're, we're at, right? And I don't want that. I don't want that for you. I don't want that for me. And I definitely don't want that for my kids, right? I want them to see pushing yourself out of your comfort zone is a good thing because if you push yourself out of your comfort zone, you can have a better life. You can have more things that you want. Your comfort zone is just that. You know, if I like laying on my couch under a warm blanket at night, that's pretty much all I'm going to get. I'm not going to progress any further than that. Okay, so I've pretty much beat into the ground getting out of your comfort zone. Um, productive, call they call it like, quote unquote, productive discomfort. So something that's moving you forward, if you're a little bit uncomfortable with it, <clears throat> but it's something that helps you get better, right? So just outside the comfort zone. I'm not asking you to take like a huge leap, right, just yet, but if you take those little baby steps, you're gonna be in a better position to, to get going and get moving. And then each step that you take gets a little bit easier because you can take that stuff long enough to the point where you feel like, okay, um, this is not so bad. I can get used to it. And then it becomes a norm for you, right? And once it becomes a norm for you, then you've got to push it out a little bit more, okay? Um, push yourself a little bit. Um, here's number three, right? Get comfortable with the idea of challenging yourself, okay? Because it's easy when you're in like sports in high school or in college or what have you and a coach is pushing you and they're challenging you, right? You have a personal trainer and they're they're coaching you, they're pushing you, they're challenging you to do things differently, right? Um, to get out of your comfort zone. But in life, most people, you, we stop pushing ourselves at a certain point. And so if you want to be able to have a better life, like I do GG Inspire because I want people to have a great life that they deserve, you have to be okay with challenging yourself and constantly saying to yourself, could I have done that better? What, what was good about that? What was not good about that? How can I improve, right? Those are the things that I need to do. Hey, Nedra, thanks for joining us. Um, okay, do something spontaneous. Do something that's like just, you know, different. Do something that's out, you know, maybe out of your personality or, or different or something you never thought you would do. Like, no, don't do anything illegal. Don't do anything crazy. But do something that's out of your comfort zone and see how people respond to it. And I do it maybe around somebody who's a good friend of yours or somebody that is generally pretty positive and good and like gives you good responses to things because at the end of the day, you want that experience to be positive. You want getting out of your comfort zone and taking that little leap of faith to get better, right? To get better. And then plan ahead, plan ahead for group interactions, plan ahead. Like if you're an introvert and you're trying to get out, plan ahead for your stuff, you know, like know that like I have a, um, like a, a wedding coming up for one of my good friends and we're going to a, um, a bachelorette party, which I haven't gone to in a long, long time. But so I planned it, right? So I know there's gonna be people there that I haven't seen in years and years and years. And I've kind of put it together in my mind and I'm like kind of conceptually trying to think about it because it's a lot because it's something that like, and, and frankly, I'll be honest with you guys, like I, these are a lot of people that I went to school with. And so some of them understand what I do and totally get it and appreciate that I've now gone into business. And some of them are still kind of like judgmental about it and don't really know and are like, I never got a chance to explain things to them. So it could be like a little bit uncomfortable. And so I'm like mentally preparing myself for being able to go and have that activity and have the conversations and like make it a really good experience instead of just not even thinking about it and having going there and having it be totally awkward. So plan that stuff like a meeting or, or a go live so that you can decrease your anxiety. I like to plan things. And I write my notes, right? Like I could potentially go live at this point without any notes, but I always feel like for, for me, and it makes me feel more comfortable, like I wanna be able to get, bring you guys value. And so if I have my notes in front of me, 
that I'm able to do a better job. I'm able actually able to perform versus like, you know, kind of going around in a circle and what I feel like saying the same thing to you all the time. So at the end of the day, you know, an introvert like me would actually prepare better so that they can be extroverted. And I'm not so worried about the words. I'm worried about, I'm more concerned about how to connect with you guys and how to make sure I can give you what you need because this is the kind of information that can change your life. Like I said, hey Marco, hey Joel, thanks for joining. Okay, so her, here's a, a question for Bernie. Um, I like being in a crowd by myself, but in my mind, it's not really a crowd. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, is that, who's Lucy? Is that your dog? Is it your girlfriend? I don't know. Um, okay, so thanks for joining us, guys. I would love to hear some questions from you. I, gosh, I went on for like 26 minutes already, so I can't believe that we're almost at the end. Uh, I know that a few of you guys had questions because I've been getting some. I wanted to see if anybody had, you know, some some stories about, you know, being introverted or extroverted or, like, because I know there's some extroverts on here. Let's see, who can I find that's an extrovert on this list here? Um, well, I know, okay, so Hassan said he was an extrovert. <coughs> I don't know. Let's see, Ebony, I think she has an introverted tendency, but she also has the ability to be very extroverted also. Um, Terry, Terry's an extrovert, I think, but she has her introverted tendencies. I think we have them all, right? That's the point. Let's see, let's see. Nedra, Nedra's an extrovert, definitely. <laughs> oh, you're sure we're stuck, okay. Um, so uh, Nedra is, a, is an extrovert. I, I don't know her to be too quiet or, or like, you know, hold her tongue. She's not a shy person. Again, like I said, introvert and shy are different. Um, but I don't know necessarily how does she, um, how does she recharge her batteries, right? Um, I would guess that she probably has, has time with her family and maybe even in a smaller group. There may be a, an, an element to her that, that's introverted. I think we have both. I think we, we all have both. Hey, Matt, thanks for joining us. Um, so it, it really just depends on you. So I hope that's helpful for you guys. I would love it if, if any of you guys have any other questions, let me know. Um, I, I actually was thinking about, we have an event actually coming up in uh, San Diego this month. Uh, it's actually this Saturday. Um, it's the 7th, and it's actually with uh, Marshall Falk, uh, the Hall of Fame football player, and Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank. So he's going to be, they are both going to be um, doing a, an event in sa Saturday uh, in San Diego. And it's all about, you know, financial literacy, kind of understanding how to be better and better educated about your money, and also an opportunity to, you know, if you have an, a business idea that you'd like to pitch to Kevin Harrington, this is your opportunity to meet him in person and do it. So um, I hope that's helpful for you guys. Uh, very exciting. It's, it's been an awesome day. Um, but, you know, at, at the end of the day, you have to remember that life is very short, and we have to uh, be good to each other. And, uh don't leave anything unsaid. I, w I would just, from what I've seen in the last, you know, four or five days, I would say like, you know, take care of the people that you, that you love and um, have honest conversations with them and just be real, right? Because at the end of the day, that's all we have is the relationships that we have with each other. So I appreciate you guys. I want to share with you to just go out there and be inspired to have an absolutely incredible life. Okay, thanks so much. Gigi Inspire signing off for today.